What up gamers? Today on Dyson Dragons, we are back in the world of Clank. Well, maybe a version of the world of Clank. It is Clank in space! <laughs> really? Yes, I mean it says in space. It says in space. I mean on the back here it says episode 3-ish. Come on, we are going to play into the sci-fi tropes. I've always wanted to do it. I mean, come on, it's a, based on the, the Muppets. Pigs in space! Get with it, come on. <laughs> okay. In any case, so, Clank in Space is once again designed by Paul Denon. It is published by Dire Wolf Digital, that's what they uh, go as, and Renegade Game Studios. I'm now gonna pass it over to Julie. She'll tell you guys a little bit more about the game itself. So despite the fact that I'm sitting here, it is not a cooperative game. She likes some competitive games. So it is a two to four player game, 40 to 90 minutes, uh, ages 12 and above. I think that sums it up. It's also, once again, a deck building game. And then for, for those of you that are new to the channel have not seen our previous video on Clank, we will be linking the video in a card. You can go back, you can take a look at it. When we get into the how to play elements of the game, it's going to be a little light. We will definitely go over some of the new stuff, but for the most part, the gameplay is the same besides a few differences. With that being said, we're going to get it to the table. So as we always do here at Dice and Dragons, we're grabbing our drinks, grabbing our best friends, and let's play some Clank. I mean, I think I like this one the best. I really like those sci-fi references, like the g -Doo. I like the g -Doo. They're cool. It's a laser sword. Yes, I can, I can definitely see that. It definitely is sci-fi. Mm -hmm. Let's take a look. Now we're gonna rock it off and take a look at the components for Clank in Space. Now for those of you that have not seen our Clank review and how to play, it should be popping up as a card shortly. If you wanna see the full details of how to play Clank and the Clank series of games, it will be there. During the course of this how to play and review, we are going to highlight primarily the differences between the two games. We'll do some uh, comparisons to show you guys what cards are the same, what cards are different, and how the games differ. Because the game does play just a little bit differently, but not enough so that we feel we need to completely redo the how to play, just provide you guys with some clarifications. With that being said, let's take a look at the components. So we will start off with the game board. Now the game board, as you can see, is in pieces. Now, the reason for that is the game board is modular. There are some pieces that are, as you can see, not double-sided. Those are the pieces that you're going to always be using when you're setting up the game board. There are others that are double-sided. You've got hydroponics and, for example, engineering on the other side. These pieces, can be changed out based on what you'd like to do with the ship, give you a little bit more replayability. You have the cargo bay section here, which as you can see is also not double-sided. Now, the other part of the game board, well, it used to be part of the game board, is the marketplace. So the marketplace is separate, as we've seen in all of the Clank expansions, and there's only four items that you're able to purchase for seven credits. It's no longer gold, we are now at credits. You have the contraband, the teleporter, the well, teleporter pass, the key, master key if you like to call it, and the med pack. Now we will take a closer look at the marketplace items, some of the new minor and major secrets, just in a later part of the video and explain to you how those work, because that's where you're gonna see some of the major differences in the game. We have once again our nice meeples. So we've got our player pawns. We have the client cubes. And new this time are the data cubes. These data cubes are going to be important as you need to place them on the board to be able to obtain your artifact. And yes, just like Clank, we have artifacts. Just took out two examples of them. We've got the 10.1, the 20.1. So the objective of the game is still the same as it was in Clank. You're going to be moving across the board, dodging villains, building your deck and trying to get the most points as possible and getting one artifact. Now just to highlight, in this game you can only get one artifact. That is one major difference from Clank to Clank in Space. Now as you can see, we once again have the minor secrets and the major secrets. We've got a very nice rule book. 
even if you're familiar with Clank, I suggest keeping it out as you're going to probably want to use the reference guide because there are some different cards and as well as different secrets than there were in Clank. We once again have our villain bag. This time it is uh, Eraticus the villain, not the dragon. We have our Eraticus boss token, the boss cubes, as well as four mercenary cubes. Now we will explain what the mercenary cubes do and how that differs from the regular Clank when we take a closer look at the game board and go a bit more through how to play. We also have the barricade token. Now the barricade token is going to seal off part of the ship. Well actually it's access to part of the ship. We will explain it in uh, the how to play but suffice it to say it means you cannot get around the ship as quickly as you could before that occurs. We once again have our starting decks. We've got the hacks which are called programs. Once again stumbles your axis, which is your movement and your scramble. There are four starting decks. This is a four player game, just like the original Clank. We've got our Boldly Go, our Phaser, our Memory Core, and the Goblin. Now those are the cards that we had. Uh, well, they're not the same cards, but they are essentially your standard cards you can always buy. They are exactly the same as the original Clank, except for one difference, which we will take a look at when we do a comparison and give you guys a closer look at the cards. And then of course you have your market deck. So Clank in space, you can just see what we would then have. It is once again a mix of items, companions to help you out, and enemies to the feet. You also notice here there are some different colors to the cards and those are factions. And as you can see also right here, you can potentially have an ability because that is a, that's a contraband I believe. So what happens if you have the contraband and you play that card? We're going to talk about that more as we take a closer look at the cards and the how to play. So keep it right here and we'll be right back giving you guys a closer look at Clank in Space and teaching you a little bit how to play the game with regards to the differences between the two versions. Now before we get into the how to play and show you guys the differences between Clank and Clank in Space, let's take a quick look at the minor and major secrets. More importantly, the ones that are different in this game when compared to the original Clank. So we won't spend too, too much time on this. There is only like two or three. The other ones are fairly straightforward. The first one and probably the most important one is the sixth crystal. As you can see, what this does is if you can find the sixth crystal, now there's only one of them, it turns each power crystal that you gain in the game into three points, something that would otherwise be useless. Now we've got this one right here, which is known as the sonic grenade and I got a little too close. So the sonic grenade means that all of your opponents would immediately generate three clank and then it is discarded. And the other new one is the multi-pass. Now what the multi-pass does is as you can see, it's got the three different faction symbols is you can use this to trigger a faction ability on a card. Now we're going to talk about factions just before we get to uh, our review. It'll make more sense then, but don't forget the multipass can unlock some abilities that would otherwise be locked. Other than that, as you can see from here, there is the vaporizer, which lets you trash a card. You've got here still your movement, your health, your larger health points, and then of course the dreaded points that actually make the boss angrier when you steal a I think it's some data in this uh, in this version of the game. So, taking a look at the major and minor secrets. Sorry, it's actually the archive when you steal some of his archival data. Now that we've taken a look at that stuff, let's get on to the, not the setup, but the how to play and we'll show you the differences between Clank and Clank in Space. Now we're going to take a look at the differences in Clank in Space and also give some uh, new viewers a little bit of a taste of how to play. Once again, you will find a link popping up to our how to play video for the original Clank. As you have said, there are not many differences, but there are some key differences and that's really what we're going to focus on with regards to the board itself. You'll notice I did not do a full setup. I really didn't want to spend a lot of time on filling up the board 
I did want you to be able to see the artifacts because when we talk about some of the different items, which we're not necessarily gonna do here, we'll take a look at the items and the different cards themselves up close uh, just after we go through this. And I only wanted to set up the part we are going to really be focusing on. Now with that being said, let's get into how to play Clank and Clank in Space, at least the basics. And then we'll talk about the differences of the game board and gameplay itself. The first thing we're going to do is we'll take our starting deck and we will shuffle up the cards. We're good to go. And just a reminder for new viewers, we have our always available cards here. We have the marketplace, the player tokens that we're going to be needing. Here we have the command access tokens, and we'll talk about that in just a minute. The power crystals, the marketplace, and of course, some fat, fat pile of credits. Now, the first thing we need to do is set up our top six cards that are available. We will deal six cards up. Notice that these are the starting cards. And oh, just a reminder for everyone, any card that has the boss attack symbol, in this case, it's Eraticus, it's the evil robot, it will go back in the deck. So for the moment, I'm just gonna put it aside. Oh, we got the resistance leader, another one that's gonna go back. All right, just a security officer. Don Warno, one, four, five, up. Oh. No good, it's going back as well. Five and six. Now, we have the iPod right here and I just wanted to illustrate. As you'll see here, it says arrive, all players get plus one clank. As this is showing up for the starting part of the game and not when we're redrawing cards, players will not get the plus one clank. Now, as the white player will be going first, we will have the three clank in the clank area, two for the orange player. And just so you guys know, I'm really only gonna be playing the white player in this example. I don't wanna spend too much time on how to play. I really wanna talk a lot more about the differences in gameplay. But, we'll get started. One, two, three, four, five. We have our starting hand. As you can see right here, we've got two stumbles and three hacks. So not a lot of movement, actually. We can't even move at all this turn. So we'd have to play the two stumbles. Now, in the game, you do play your cards one at a time. So for example, if you do get something that will let you discard a card, for example, you could potentially discard one of these stumbles. So we have the two stumbles that we played. They generate plus two clank. We have then the three hacks, which give us three buying power. And just for the sake of fun, we will draw the g laser sword. That goes in our discard. We will then draw another five cards. As there are only five in the deck right now, these are the five. I'm just gonna put them off to the side. We take the discard and we shuffle it back up. Now, as I told you guys, I'm only gonna play the white player. I'm not really gonna play the orange player. So we'll just take a look at these cards and this is perfect. We've got the access, which is movement, the hack, the hack, the hack again, and then the scramble, which is buying power and movement. Now, before we can get to uh, another player's turn, we do have to reload the marketplace. All right, now we'll take a look at what we have. So we've got the access, which will play first, which will let us move one. We've got the scramble, which will let us move another one and also give us one buying power. Then we have the three hacks for another three buying power for a total of four. Now there's nothing that we can buy up here. We can however buy the boldly go, the phaser, because you can see the what they cost is right here, lower right hand corner. We're gonna buy the boldly go. We could use some more buying power and some more movement. Now the discard. Actually, I shouldn't have shuffled this up earlier. Should have discarded all of them. 
at the same time. So once you've gone through your first 10 cards, you shuffle it back up all together. You're good to go. You deal out your next five cards. This is actually another very solid hand. And you're gonna just keep going through the cards and the hands, moving across the board, gaining resources, and trying to get to the artifact. Now, I'm just gonna find the Jidu Sword. I wanna explain what this does. So, the Jidu Laser Sword is a pretty cool card. It gives you three attack, but it means you generate plus two clank. So on your turn, if you did play the Jidu Laser Sword, you would have to generate two clank, but you have three attack power, which you could then use to potentially kill a security officer or the vault guard, which can only be defeated in a security checkpoint. These spaces are security checkpoints. So instead of crystal caverns, you have security checkpoints. Now, the last thing I'm going to mention on really how to play this version of the game in terms of just basic how to play, when you move into a space, you will take one secret. In this case, it is a vaporizer, meaning you can trash a card. Trashing a card means that anything in your play area means that you've played it down or face up in your discard pile. You can then discard it, trash it, get it out of your deck. People that are familiar with deck builders will know what trashing a card means. And it's the same thing when you move into a space with a minor secret. Sorry, not a minor secret, a major secret. You will get that major secret. Now, what are the other differences in the game? Well, for example, you have to be in this area of the ship and it's clarified in the rules to be able to score. If you happen to get killed in the command area of the ship, you will not score anything. Unlike uh, Clank, where you really could like, you know, score if you died from a lot of places and still win, you really need to be moving out of the ship in order to score points at the end of the game. You have the four escape pods, which are different paths to escape. So players are not all moving in the same direction. Now, you have these spaces that you can see right here, which are for your data cubes. Now, each player needs to interact with these terminals in order to get a command access token. Now, without a command access token, you cannot enter the command area of the ship. You will not be able to acquire any artifacts. So it's very important that you get your tokens down and you gain command level access. As you also notice, there are some new spaces on the board. Here you have the conveyor belt where you can move from this space to this space to this space very quickly across the ship. And that's one of the things that I do really like. You also have the teleporter. No, with the teleporter, part of the teleporter axis, you can teleport to different areas of the ship, making moving around very easy. Once again, to get into the command area, you still need a command access token. You can, no matter what you have, whether it's teleport to an adjacent space or not, no command access token, no access to the command module of the ship. You have the contraband, which is just points. You've got your key, which works same as the key that uh, you would need to use in the regular clank. Now, as you can see, there's also spaces here that are with crystals. This is the power crystal space. If you enter that space, you would gain a power crystal and it has uses on specific cards. And there's also a specific secret related to it. We'll talk about that when we take a closer look at the cards. Once again, just for people that are new and also returning people, you can see one damage from an enemy, two damage from an enemy, locked. This symbol here means you actually generate clank. It's a new symbol uh, in the game. So if you did place your data cube there, you would generate clank. These are the market 
place square. So any place marked with an M means you're able to buy something from the marketplace. We once again have the health track up here. And that's really what is different about this game. Now we briefly covered the how to play for uh, a few minutes. And now you've seen just sort of the differences on the game board. Oh, and not to forget, you can still get health when you go to those locations as well. Also, just want to talk quickly about the marketplace items as we have them out here. I was going to do it separately, but now is a good time as any. We've got the contraband, which really replaces your crown. There are two of each of these items. There are not more. So there's two contraband items, each worth 10 points. There are two teleportation keys, each worth five points. There are two keys. And then there's the med pack, which when you buy the med pack, you immediately heal two health. You cannot hang on to it and heal later. You use it immediately. Now, as this was set up as a two player game, there are only four of those items that are available. A big difference than playing the original Clank. Now, the one last thing I want to talk about before we move on from these differences and take a closer look at just some of the cards and some of the comparables to the original game is the boss track over here. So as you can see, it works very much the same way as the danger level goes up. The boss moves up here, but then we've got these red tokens up there. Now, those are bounty hunters. And what happens is, is that when you encounter a bounty hunter, if you pull... And I'll give you an example here. A bounty hunter out of the bag when the boss attacks. Now, the boss will attack whenever that Eraticus symbol comes up. We'll say that he's pulling just a bunch of stuff. Let's pull some stuff out of here. So we pulling six. That's a lot for right now. But as you can see, we pull the red. Each player would take a damage. So the first red would go in the bag when he was up there. Each player would then take one damage. If the red shows up, when the boss reaches this point, we'll just put the red in the bag, keep it clear, you get the barricade. Now, what the barricade does is it blocks you from moving back quickly into the rear access part of the ship. So, those are the differences in the game. You see the differences with the boss, the bounty hunters, and the differences on the board itself. So, we're going to cut right now, and we are going to take a closer look at the cards so keep it right here sorry guys i know i said we'd be moving on to the cards right now but i just realized i made a mistake with the hyperlift when you enter this space and you have one movement point you can move to any hyperlift space including jetting all the way from the command module back to the cargo bay where you're trying to escape now the only way you are not able to move to this space would be if the Barricade token is up. My apologies for that slight mistake. We've corrected the hyperlift and we're moving on to the cards, so keep it right here. Now we're just going to do a quick comparison between the two starting hands in the Clank game. So Clank and Clank in Space. As you can see, they match up very well. Now I didn't deal out all 10 cards, would have taken up too much room. You've got the burrow, the hacks, the stumbles, the sidesteps, and the scrambles. Now, there is some difference, though. As we take a look at Burgle, there's nothing else marked on the card. Whereas, if we take a look at Hack, Hack is listed as being a program. Now, certain things will come into play later on, or you might be able to discard a program. It is the same with regards to Sidestep. So, there's nothing marked on Sidestep. However, if you take a look at Access, your other movement, it is also listed as a program. So that just shows you guys some of the minor differences between the two games that can become quite important uh, depending on the cards that you add to your deck. Now we'll take a closer look at your always available cards and then uh, we're gonna move on to the Clank and Space cards and talk a little bit more about how you use those. So keep it right here. Now we're taking a quick look at the Clank in Space and the Clank cards once again. Now these are from the decks that are always available to purchase. And as you can see, there really is not that many differences. Explore, Boldly Go, same point value, same cost. Now there is a difference with regards to the memory cords, five versus seven, and they both still cost seven to purchase. 
The mercenary and the phaser, love that joke, are still the same. And then the goblin and the goblin are actually identical, except you do have a different enemy if you want to make things harder and a little different, such as the Eratobot on the other side of the goblin card, which you do not have in the original clank. You have to buy uh, expansions to get any type of new uh, base monster that's always available for being, sorry, to be defeated in combat. Now the reason why the memory cores are only five points instead of seven is that there are certain cards such as the power converter that you guys saw come up when I was setting everything up that can allow you to sell your memory cords and actually make more money. You'll get 10 credits for it, essentially being making this worth 10 instead of the seven of the secret tome. So that's another one of the differences in this game. Now we're gonna take a closer look at the cards from Clank in Space and uh, just how the factions work. And then we're gonna continue on with our review of the game. Keep it right here. Now we're gonna take a closer look at the cards and the faction part of Clank in Space. Now the reason why we're doing this is this is something that differs greatly from the original Clank. And it's more of that gamer part of the game where you're really gonna be trying to collect specific sets and get some really cool combos going in the game. So let's start with the factions. We have the Outlaws, which are orange, the Resistance, which are purple, and Science, which is green. Each of them have their symbol. And if they so happen to have a special ability that can be tied to their faction, it'll be marked at the bottom of the card. Take, for example, the Information Broker. Down here, you see an Outlaw symbol, meaning if you played Don Uno with him, you would be able to trigger this ability, which is look at the top two cards of your deck, draw one and discard the other. Now Don Uno also has a pretty cool special ability. If you have the contraband, meaning you bought it from the marketplace, anytime you play him, you may teleport to an adjacent space. Now, we've got the Android Runaway here, and he's interesting because he's not even a member of a faction. However, if you'd played a science faction member, this turn he has a special ability that would trigger which would give you some extra movement and you would not have to stop at any security checkpoints just to give you a quick example of what you might get with the resistance the gd infiltrator if you played another resistance member say the phantom agent you ignore enemies on the board this turn meaning you're not going to take any damage then finally we've got the cards that work with the power crystals so let's take a look at Dr. Whiskers. This one I think is actually quite powerful. If you have a power crystal, you may heal one health or you can trigger the boss to attack. So depending on how dangerous things are in the game and if you're trying to kill your opponent because maybe they're gonna get out before you, that card can be very powerful. Now we've got the Feline. Now the Feline, it lets you discard a card to draw a card and it essentially gets powered up by the power crystal because instead of discarding a card, you can just, uh, sorry, you still discard a card, but you get to draw two cards. A very powerful ability. And now that we've detailed just sort of the differences in the cards, make sure that you're trying to get your sets to work together. Don't forget to get power crystals. If you buy a good card that requires a contraband, make sure you pick up those items because that's how you're really gonna succeed in the game. These are more of the complicated elements that you see in this version of the game when compared to the original Clank. And now stay tuned for our review of the game. Clank in space, a deck building adventure. what do you think of the game? So like the other Clanks, I did enjoy it. Uh, it's, it's similar, but it has very different mechanics uh, as, as you saw through the playthrough. Okay, cut. Yeah, that was horrible. It's yeah. similar, but it's different. Okay, yes. let's not get up. Let's just go yeah. from here. Three, two, one. Clank in space, a deck building adventure. I, so I, what did you think of the game? I enjoyed it, uh, maybe less than other games. I'll explain why a little bit. Um, I like the sci-fi elements of it. I like the uh, the different aspects, the um, like the different um, uh, the different cards that you can get. They're so they're 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 definitely thematic. Cut. The uh, uh, the just say it. Don't. I'm trying to get it out. Okay. Three, two, one. 
Frank in space. I can't believe I married you. What did you think of the game? Uh, I I enjoyed this one, but probably not as much as uh, as others. Uh, it definitely has different mechanics that are interesting. I like the cards. Uh, but the idea I find, one of the things I find less interesting about this game is the fact that the resource, at least, at least when you play two people, um, the market, because you can just go into the market and buy everything you want and the market is maybe a little bit further in, it's very easy for one person to go in and lock up both um, the key and the transporter, the teleporter, and make it really difficult for the other person to get around. Um, so the first time we played, that happened to you. And the second time we played, it basically happened to me. And it yeah. makes it a little bit, I, we've had a debate about this. We're not going to see eye to eye about it. I think it makes the game less fun uh, because basically then you're, you're having a lot more trouble getting around the board. And the strategy would be, well, if you don't, it would almost be, as far as I'm concerned, if you're not going to get the key or the transporter, you might as well just haul ass back out and uh, make it out with hopefully as many points as possible. Yes, but there are a lot of opportunities to score points and one of the reasons why when our last playthrough I did grab the key in the transporter is because you were winning about 50 to 7. You would rack up a lot of points quickly and I think that's one of the things that is very different in this version of Clank than in let's say the the original Clank. The way you get points is not quite the same. There are some very high scoring point cards that you can buy for minimal amounts of money and that can really change the flow of the game. You had some really nice pulls, you were rescuing all the prisoners in the ship and by about the fourth or fifth round I'm sitting there and I'm like I just have money, she's got all the points. So that gave me really only one option and if you hadn't delayed you actually would have lost by only what? Four points, maybe? I still would have lost. But four points. The, the, the point I'm trying to make is it made it, it's not as much fun. You're limited in your strategies because of it. I find that the other Clank games made it a little bit more strategic in, in trying to plan your time and plan your way around the board. And like I said, as far as I'm concerned, in this case, if you're not going to get the key and the transporter, you might as well just turn around and go back and make it a short game. Well, I have to, I have to disagree with you on the strategic part. I think it actually makes the game more strategic. I think this is a tightened up version of Clank. And whereas Clank is probably a lot more fun, you can easily get it to the table, this is Clank turned into more of a gamer's game. This is when you're going to have to think about your actions, how quickly you want to get to the marketplace, what you want to buy, and probably plan out your moves a little bit more in advance. Now there's still going to be that random element of what you actually get from the cards that you're able to purchase, but I think that this is a tighter game. But it's also meant for a different crowd, and that's why I think you don't enjoy it as much as the other Clank. The other Clank has a lot more, I would say, forgiveness, it's a lot more open. The fact that you can get multiple artifacts changes the game a lot, whereas in this game you can only get one artifact, there is no way to avoid that. You you can't get an extra one. I definitely think it's definitely more competitive and it's definitely more of a versus game than the other uh, the other Clanks. Uh, it was probably why I don't like this one quite as much when it comes to playing with you. Uh, if we're playing multiple people, actually playing any time with you, you're so competitive <laughs> and you're so devious. So are you. <laughs> that it makes it uh, a little bit less fun for me because I don't like us having that tension. So if you're enjoying competitive games, you'll enjoy it. It's pretty um, to be reminiscent of Sam. Uh, I, I like the different colors in it and the different characters. Uh, well, what about the faction system now that you bring up the, uh, the So characters? the factions offer a different dynamic and I, um, it's, it allows you to take advantage and to be a little bit more strategic about the different cards that you take because you can't use necessarily uh, the, the bonus if you don't have the different factions. So yeah. basically if you have, if you're, you pull a card uh, and you're... You let's already say, covered that in the how to play. Okay, I'm sorry. Then you would basically uh, be able to use that. The other thing with the crystals that's a little frustrating, I found, and it, like I said, it happened when it worked in my favor, I enjoyed it. When it worked against me, I did so you go around collecting these crystals and there's the one secret the there's only. only one secret so when you're collecting them they help you a little bit depending on which cards you may pull 
but at the end of the game they're worth zero if you didn't pull that secret. So or you have to sell them because you did have the opportunity to potentially sell them, but you ended up dying right. My card didn't come back up to give yep. me the opportunity to sell it. Yeah. So, so for me, I'll go right into the rating system. Um, I honestly, I think I, I give this one just like just a six. And yesterday, when we did our playthrough to be able to do the review, if you had asked me yesterday, I would have said I give it a five because I was really frustrated with the game. And to be honest, as you know, partway through it, I was like, yeah, I'm done. I don't want to play this anymore. Let's th let the game be over. Um, yeah, you were still winning that entire time. Yeah, it didn't feel like I was. And it wasn't as enjoyable, like I say, as others. So for me, it's a six. Uh, I'd be interested, uh, we haven't played it more than two players. We haven't played it four. I'd be interested to see if the dynamic changes a little bit as it has yeah. other times we've played other clanks. Um, but for me, that the main reason I, I rated just the six is, is because I found it a little too competitive uh, from the style of game I like to play w with you. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna say the exact opposite. This is an eight. This is probably the best version of Clank as a pure game. It is streamlined. They have definitely taken out like a lot of the fat, for example. The the way they've streamlined the marketplace, it does make it so that the game is going to flow a lot faster. The abilities to move around the board differently will make it so that you're kind of also not necessarily competing as directly with the other players, but it does mean that there is going to be a lot more of those competitive elements that some people might not like, such as hate drafting, hate drafting to block a player from pulling a specific combo because the combos in this game are significantly powerful. For example, I did pull the card and we did take a look at it and the card close-up whiskers, the fact that you can trigger a boss attack, can be quite deadly and really if you don't have a lot of clank and you've been collecting a lot of negative client cards, you can really just almost attack the other players, something that you could not do in the original client. So the reason why I think it is a better game is because it is better designed. Now, is it a more fun game? Now, that is entirely going to come down to your personal opinion, why you like to play Clank and who you're going to play Clank with. Now, just talking about the art, the sci-fi theme, I really like it. I like the fun, you know, throwbacks to Star Wars. Even on the box back here, there's a throwback to Alien in Space. Everyone can hear you clank. So the theme is very well done. The modular board, I think, is a little bit of a detraction to me. Like, as you've seen just from us showing the components, it's already a little bit dinged up. I will contact Renegade, see if we can maybe get another one, but I don't know if the component quality is as good as just a standard board, but it does give you a couple of more uh, replayable elements and lets you customize the board just a little bit more than you can with the standard game board. So game-wise, this is a fantastic game. I'm going to actually give it an 8. However, I will not recommend this to everyone, whereas Clank and all of its expansions are very family-friendly. You can pick it up and play with anyone. For example, we played with her parents. I would not play this version with her parents. I don't think they'd like this version. I think it's a little bit too in your face. However, if you have a gaming group, you know, that you meet with regularly, or you're looking for something to do before you have an RPG night, and let's say you've played Clank, but people are like, oh, I'm not really big on it. It's a little too easy. Well, Clank in Space is that sort of more refined version that you know, more experienced gamers are really going to enjoy. And that's where I'm rating it from. But make the decision yourself. They're both really good games, but I do think that they serve a different market. And the neat thing is, is that Renegade and Direwolf and Paul Denon, the designer, managed to do that while keeping the same Clank flavor. I mean, even though Julie gave it a six, she still will play it. She still wants to get it on the table, but just maybe not two of us butting heads. No, not the two of us again, ever. Well, we'll have to see. There is the expansion coming out. That's part of the reason why we're doing this, so. We'll have to be four. We'll have to be four. Yeah. What if the expansion changes the game up? We'll still have to be four. Okay. Well, from all of us here on Dice and Dragons. You grab your best friend? No. She always forgets. It's the easiest part. Keep playing games. But we're supposed to grab our best friends first. No, that's only in the beginning. I always take my sip first. And then I say, keep playing games. 
Okay, well, she did say it. And don't forget, we do have our videos popping up just above our heads. Trying to do it a little bit later because it'll show up better in with YouTube. And you can also find the links to our social media feeds down below in the video description. Yeah. I beat you. Yeah. And that's just why you're not happy. No, it's because you were ruthless with me and you blocked me and you picked up all the secrets. And you were still winning. No.